EP1100 Data Communication and Computer Networks. In this part, I will go over the OSI and Internet models. The illustrations in the material are collected from Forsan, Data Communications and Networking, published by McGraw-Hill. The International Organization for Standards has defined the Open System in the Interconnection model. It's a seven layer model. The layers are numbered from one to seven, with the first layer being in the bottom. It's a physical layer, data link layer, followed by network layer, transport, session, presentation, and application. There are three key concepts in this model. That of a service. The most basic service is provided by the physical layer. This service is then made better by the data link layer. It's extended over multiple links by the network layer. And eventually, the transport layer provides services across the whole network. The services are further refined up to the application, which provides the service to the end user. Another concept is the interface. This is how a higher layer accesses the service of a lower layer. Each layer has a set of protocols that implements the functions that it sh should support. This model originates from the early 1980s. It was never fully implemented and deployed, and the lacking protocols were the presentation and the session layers. The Internet protocols are closely related to the OSI model, but it only retains five of the seven layers. The presentation and the session layers are missing. This model is also referred to as TCP IP protocol suite, based on the most important protocols, the network protocol IP and one of the transport protocols TCP. Here we show the different protocols that are implemented in the different nodes of a network. We see that the intermediate network nodes only have the lower three layers because they only provide the network service. They don't provide any higher service than that. The end systems provide the full suite of five protocols. We also note that the application protocol on the sender side communicates with the application protocol on the receiver side. So there's a peer-to-peer -peer protocol connection between these protocol layers. The application layer on the sender side accesses the service of the transport protocol through a well-defined interface marked here as 5.4 interface. And similar interfaces are between all other layers. The physical layer is the one that carries the bits across the network. When data is being exchanged, the application protocol on the sender side will receive data from, from a program. It will take the data and will add its own protocol information. Such a unit is called a protocol data unit. The information marked H5 is destined for the application protocol on the receiver side. The PDU of the layer 5 is passed on as a block to layer 4. Layer 4 will add its own control information, which is of course destined for layer 4 on the receiver side. This procedure is repeated, but on layer 2 we see here that we marked that the control information is both added as a header at the beginning of the data unit and also as a trailer at the end of the data unit. This will be evident when we get into uh, the specifics of the protocol. The service of layer 1, the physical layers, is the enabler of the whole communication. This is where the bits are transported across the transmission medium from the sender side over to the receiver side. When bits are being received at the receiver side, they are passed on to the data link. It will look at the control information H2 and T2, strip it off, and deliver the unit up to layer 3. It will look at control information H3, strip it off, and deliver the unit to layer 4. It also strip uses and strips off its control information and delivers a unit to layer 5, which eventually is able to deliver application data unit to the receiving application. I will now go over the different layers. We start from the enabling layer at the physical layer. It will receive data from a data link layer. It will take the bits of the data and send them through a transmission medium. The transmission of bits between nodes is carried by waveguides, cables, for electrical and optical signals, or there could be unguided medium, meaning free space for radio and optical signals. The protocol marks the beginning and end of a data unit, called a frame. The protocol specifies the physical connection between devices and the medium, such as mechanical and electrical interfaces, the connectors, cables, and voltage levels of the signals. It ensures the transmission and reception of signals through digital modulation or line coding, and also ensures that the, there's synchronization between the sender and receivers. 
standards are for example EIA RS-232 or ITU synchronous digital hierarchy. The data link layer provides delivery of frames across a link between neighboring nodes. The functions that it adds to the physical layer is flow control to make sure that the sender does not send more frames than what the receiver can handle, error control to handle frames that are received in error, and access controls when there are several senders, so for instance for a wireless link, so that not more than one sender is sending at any one time. Otherwise we would have a superposition of the signals and no frames would be received. Since a link could have many nodes connecting it, you also need addresses to point out which is the receiver and which is the sender of the frame. The network layer relies on the hop-to-hop -hop delivery of the data links and it puts these links together into full connection from any computer to any other computer. When end system A sends data, it's received by B. B will look at address information with the data and determine that the data should be forwarded to node E. E will receive the frame, look at the address and determine that the frame should be forwarded to F. This function of providing delivery from source to destination is called routing. The protocols of this layer are the Internet Protocol and OSPF for computing routes and BGP for providing routes between networks. Transport layer provides communication between the processes of the end systems. Hence it needs to have its own address so that the receiving computer will know which application it should pass the data to. There are different types of transport layers. It could be reliable communication and non-reliable. In order to have a reliable communication, the protocol implements flow control, similar to the data link layer, ensuring that the sender will not send data at a higher rate than what the receiver can handle. There is also error control, so that the receiver detects whether there is error in the messages or whether data is missing and can ask for retransmission from the sender. There is also traffic control to resolve any congestion that might have occurred in the network. There is also connection setup and teardown if the communication is reliable. The protocol also provides segmentation and reassembly of application data units so that the receiving protocol will deliver the data in the same application unit format as it was sent. Protocols on this level are transmission control protocol TCP and user datagram protocol, both by IETF. The ISO has standardized transport control protocols of classes 0 to 4. The application layer provides services to the end users. We see here examples SMTP, which is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol for email, Telnet for remote logging, and HTTP for web services. The OSI model also has session and presentation layers. The session layer has a concept of dialogues. This would actually be useful today when we have mobile systems and connections to networks are changing with handovers and we may even hand over from mobile 3G network to a Wi-Fi and this could be maintained in one dialogue even though the connections are different. It also helps multiplexing of data streams which I mentioned was a function of the transport protocol in the internet protocols. The presentation layer provides application independent data representation. This could also be useful to provide compatibility between applications of different systems. These functions are either not present in the Internet protocols or integrated into the application and transport layers. This concludes this teaching module. So in summary, I provided concepts such as connectivity, topology, given some terminology and examples of network types. We talked about system, architecture, model and the concept of layering. I've defined what the protocol is and given an example of network models. And now most recently we looked at layered models, the Internet model and the OSI model. In the coming modules, we will look at the main functions of the different layers. Thank you.